baby M cars frolicking in the sun. And this is the newest baby M, the M2. It's the cheapest high-performance BMW, and it probably should be the least desirable. But there's something about them hips. Well, 71 millimetres of extra girth over an M240, actually. It's 64 millimetres wider at the front, too. Stronger, lighter wheel carriers work with better suspension components, and it also gets the clever variable locking differential from the F80 M3. The motor is an N55 3.6 litre rated at 370 horsepower and 343 foot-pounds with 369 available on overboost. It shares some trick internals with the M3 and it uses just one turbocharger. In summary, yum yum. to accuse the M2 of not being a proper M car because it does, like the M1, sorry, 1M, have a fairly ordinary based engine. This time it's called the N55. That's the N54 in the 1M. And that means that this has the same, pretty much the same fret capacity. So the block and the head are quite similar. This is direct injection. And it has a single sort of twin scrolly turbo. So it's variable vanes. The idea is that it can do with one turbo what the 1M can do with two turbos. So you end up with 370 horsepower and about 343 foot-pounds of torque, but pushing something that's a fair bit under 1,600 kilograms. The package is pretty potent. And of course, being turbocharged, every time you put your foot down in gear, roll on performance, as I rather annoyingly like to call it, um, is really quite good. It gives you the impression that you have a lot more than you really do. Does that mean it's gutless at the top end? No. It means the thing just feels rampantly fast the whole time. I think it's a really good engine and I love the manual transmission. I think I definitely would have a manual in my M2. But the reason for this comparison is that I still think the 1M is a sensational little car. I think it's got a spirit to it, a kind of pugnacious punchiness that BMW hasn't managed to repeat for quite some time. And I always hoped that this would be the car that would do that. And in many ways, you know what? It does, it feels so special. It feels short, small, wieldy. And even though it's dried out a bit now, some of the exterior shots you'll see were shot when it was wet. This thing is Larry. Turn the systems off and you have every chance of having a large accident. And that's what this car should be all about. It's fantastic. I suppose the beauty of having your own video show is you can kind of choose which videos you want to make. So this isn't objective because I don't think 1M and M2 prospective owners are in the same camp. One's a bit of a collector's car now. This is a new everyday car, this M2. But the differences are quite interesting. For example, drive them back to back. And whereas I thought the M2's electric steering was a really good job, in fact, better than the M3, M4 coupe, it feels quite inert at the front compared to the one. That's got a lovely hydraulic assisted rack and it just feels so direct and even though I don't like the word feel, I feel more connected in that car at the front than I do. I also feel it turns quicker, it's got a quicker ratio, the 1M, so the whole car just feels up on its toes and more nervous, but also more agile because it's got a shorter wheelbase and the wider tracks. There's an anger about that car that's missing in this one. This, on the other hand, counters by being much, much more enjoyable on a long journey and less nervous. It also does this quite well. <laughs> it's a proper M car, it really is. And you could just fling it about. I think it's less angry. When you put the power in and go into the slide, the M2 is much more predictable, it's less spiky. That torque reaction gives you a nicer transition into a slide. And you could, you know, this is quite quick now, so you could really throw this thing in at, what's that, 90 odd miles an hour? Big smoky one, yeah. Proper, proper car. What are these things now in sterling? 50 something thousand pounds? Some people saying it's too expensive given it's an ordinary BMW engine. It's not, it's a proper M car. Oh, oh, oh. oh I love this car. It is fan dabby doozy. What do you think about the way they look? Do you prefer this one or the one? I'm not sure. Oh, look, there's a third gear slide. Let's forget about the looks. Just such a compelling recipe, isn't it? Small bodied car, short wheelbase, 
widen the tracks, insert big motor, keep manual gearbox, keep people like me that whinge about the onwards creep of automised everything. Very, very happy indeed, because this is just a great car. It really is. I love it. I think it's fantastic. It's quite a difficult car to pigeonhole the M2, because it's not really a Golf R rival. It's too much, it's too expensive, and it's too exciting, and it's too rear-wheel drive. It's not really a Focus RS rival. What is it? I suppose to understand the M2, you sort of need to know where it came from, don't you? And that means, I think you need to drive it back to back against one of these. I first drove a BMW 1M in 2011 and I thought it was sensational. I still think it's sensational now. It really is such a special little car. This was a skunk works project. It was a bunch of engineers that said they wanted to do something, but there wasn't the time or the resource to do it in a conventional fashion, so they went and did it at weekends. And it has that feel of being a bit, a bit naughty. So they took an N54 twin turbocharged 3 litre straight six out of a 135i, lightened the flywheel, and then put it in the most fantastic, sporty, wide body shell. The result is one of the naughtiest cars I've ever driven. It's not the fastest, but it has just got this personality of wanting to be a bit troublesome. And I have to say, cards on the table, this is mine. I bought one because I think they're so special, I had to have one. Prices seem to be a bit silly at the moment, but so what? It really is worth every single penny. And I've been a bit naughty with this one because I've put a full Krapovic exhaust on it, which is titanium and gorgeous, and I've had it remap. So in a straight line, we're going to find out in a little bit whether it's quicker than the M2. But the chassis on this thing is so extraordinary. It's so angry. Second gear come into a hairpin and it goes so quickly. That initial movement into oversteer is a snap and I love that. Combination of E92 M3 differential, manual gearbox, very short wheelbase, very wide tracks means this is a very, very exciting car, but it's snappy and it's lively, and we knew it at the time. And I still don't think there's anything much spikier on sale today. Certainly not the M2. Tellingly, I love the steering in this car as well. The steering is just better. It's more direct. I just feel connected in a way I don't in the M2. And the speed and the power delivery, well, do you know what? The engine feels a bit freer revving. That might be because of the, the light and flywheel, and this feels a bit pokier, but then I have played with it a bit, so I can't really say. I think in standard form, an M2 has the legs of an M1. Sorry, I've got an M. Of course, the etymology of 1M is quite interesting, isn't it? It's the only M car that has the number before the letter because the M1 is the original BMW supercar from 1979, and BMW felt that out of respect, it couldn't kind of usurp that name. Uh, for a little two-door small sleeve. What I do know is it's just got an M badge on the boot and I love the way it drives. And that's because it's a special little car. Sitting on a weenie wheelbase with big flared arches, it has 335 horsepower and the same 369 foot-pounds of torque as the M2, but all the time, not as overboost. The differential is from the E92 M3, as is most of the rear suspension assembly and the brakes. In fact, it's easier to view the 1M as an E92 M3 chassis wedged under a widened 1 series body with a lightly breathed on 135 motor under the bonnet, or hood, depending on where you live. There's no doubting that this differential doesn't feel as sophisticated as the one that's fitted to the M2, so the traction in this car is more confused, more inconsistent. Sometimes it really hooks up and goes on these super sport Michelin. Sometimes it kind of spins one wheel, other times it snaps you sideways. And this does feel a properly old school driving experience. It may only be five years old, 
but it might as well be mid 80s. To me, this is big turbocharging. This is, dare I say it, a modern day Sierra Cosworth. I love that. It's angry, it's dangerous. It's not especially competent, not especially fast. Golf R will leave this thing for dead in British conditions, but I don't care. Golf R can't do that. <laughs> Ready when you are. Okay, bit of science then. Litchfield stage one tune on my 1M with an Akrapovich exhaust all the way through. That's an M2. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> yes. It's got the legs on it, hasn't it? But you know what? When they were standard, or when this was standard, that would have the legs on this, in fairness. I feel quite smug though. Love it when my toys do well. There was a time when people like me said that a real M car could not be turbocharged. Well, I have to admit, the people like me were talking absolute bobbins. These two are real M cars, brimming with character. And one day, I would like to have both in my garage. But for now, I'll stick with the black one.